Hi, I'm Jason Wood with Synergy One Lending, your San Diego VA loan guy. And today on Veterans One, we are pleased to have our guest, Mike Chazelle, broker owner of Century Residential. Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. And um, so first we wanted to just get started and learn a little bit about Mike Chazelle. Who is Mike Chazelle? I know you're a veteran, right? Yes, sir. And um, so tell us a little bit about your military experience. When did you think about joining the military or how did you get into the military? Yeah, great question. It um, goes back to when I was a kid. Um, uh, my grandfather was a World War II navigator on a B-17. If you've seen the movie Memphis Bell, yeah. uh, he was the guy in the little bubble with the uh, operating the bombardier. Um, and uh, he was my hero growing up. Um, ended up getting shot down in German-occupied France, spent two years in a POW camp, uh, broke his back on the way down. It was just a crazy, crazy story. Um, if you've seen the movie The Great Escape yeah. uh, with Steve McQueen, uh, our millennial audience is probably a little bit too young uh, for that, <laughs> but I highly recommend it. Go watch The Great Escape. Um, that was based on his uh, prisoner of war camp that he was at. Um, there were 80 um, officers that actually tunneled out and escaped, aviators that tunneled out and escaped um, on the northern part of his compound. A lot of those, unfortunately, were rounded up by the Germans and executed. Uh, fortunately, my grandfather survived the experience and we're here today. And uh, he was my hero growing up, so I always thought service was something that I wanted to do and ended up getting recruited to uh, play ball at uh, the Naval Academy. And um, I was a Texas kid, wasn't good enough or fast enough to play at A&M or Texas. So <laughs> it, was either, it was either an Ivy League school or the Naval Academy and chose the Naval Academy because I had the opportunity to serve afterwards and ended up, uh, ended up in the Marines, ended up getting stationed out in San Diego and spending five years in the Marine Corps. That's awesome. What was your job yeah. in the Marine Corps? What did you do? I was a communications officer, ground, ground side, um, kind of technical. Luckily, we had some really smart Marines. The acronym for Marine is muscles are required, um, intelligence not essential. Uh, <laughs> however, that being said, I got, <laughs> I got lucky and had some uh, really smart uh, communicators. So we would, when we would deploy, um, our team was responsible for setting up the whole tactical communications architecture. So think about like being in the middle of the desert, in the middle of Iraq, and setting up something like this, except it's got the command post has phone, data, uh, the top secret feed, the predator feed, and you're up and operational in eight hours, including power. Wow, that's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. kind of cool. So, um, so you served in the Marines, and then you transitioned from the Marines into civilian life. Yep. Um, and you're in the real estate industry now, right? Correct. So how was, tell us about that transition. How did you decide, like, real estate is where you wanted to go? And, and I know you do a lot with, with the military community and veterans and stuff. So tell us how you kind of segued into that. Yeah, so I loved the Marine Corps, and it was phenomenal. But uh, four years at the Naval Academy and then five years on the, in the Marines, our graduating class was September 11th, 2001, so it was right when Afghanistan and Iraq kicked off. And so it was the, the minute we hit the fleet, we were deploying. So for a 10-year period, I went through either training or deployments. Um, there were a couple of just really close calls uh, for, for me and Iraq. Um, and um, you know, my stepfather passed away while I was in Iraq. I had a couple of very close calls and I was like, hey, if I stay in after my five years, there's a good opportunity I'll spend my entire 20s in Iraq or Afghanistan and I believe in the cause, but um, uh, I wasn't, I was at a point where I didn't, I, I no longer wanted to play roulette with my life because I knew if I, something, unfortunately, if something happened to me, um, uh, I'd probably take my mom with me. Um, I, I'm kind of, you know, it for my mom, it's my, my sister and I, and so um, made the decision to, to get out, um, but fell in love with San Diego. San Diego is just an amazing town. I remember my fourth grade teacher always talking about San Diego. Um, I was born up in Minnesota, and he would talk about San Diego all the time, and when I got here, I'm like, I understand why he talks about it like that, especially being from Minnesota. <laughs> right, right, it's like being on vacation all right. the time. Yeah. And uh, had a couple, wanted to get out, but wanted to stay in San Diego and start my own business, and had a couple mentors in real estate, and uh, started a real estate brokerage. Just started flipping homes, uh, buying homes myself, knowing, having no idea what I was doing. Um, it's just school of hard knocks um, and on the job training, and um, helped out some buddies uh, buying and selling their homes, and kind of figured it out um, as I went. It's awesome. And so now you, you have your, your brand, your own brokerage, it's Century Residential, 
And I know you're doing some really exciting stuff with that. I mean, I know you cater a lot to the military. You help a lot Correct. of military families. Um, <clears throat> but you're taking this beyond San Diego, right? Correct. Tell us about that a little bit. Tell us about your, your vision. Uh, when I first getting into real estate, I, I mentored under a top producer up in LA. And I was helping my friends and family down here in San Diego. A lot of those were military because that was naturally our sphere. The LA real estate market was great. It was $2 million sales, big commission checks, but it was just a job and a big paycheck. And there's no, there was no real passion or feeling or feeling of service, of serving people. What I loved about the Marine Corps is you're, you're serving. You're serving the guys next to you and you're serving your country. Um, real estate up in LA was just go make a bunch of money and, um, and people treated you like a commodity um, down here, working with the military was fantastic. It was empowering. It was enlightening. And so made the commitment to just go all in on that and serve as much as we could. So here we are 10 years later. We've got a, a residential uh, brokerage that focuses on educating and empowering military around real estate. I mean, we were just looking over the metrics before the show, the average 65-year-old retiree, 83% of their net worth is tied up in their real estate. Right, it's important. If you look at just the military as a demographic, 11% of them end up using their VA loan in their lifetime. 90% don't use their VA loan. Um, crazy. There's a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of lack of education. I think the military is great at teaching folks to be warfighters and leaders but they are not good. In fact, I would say they're subpar at helping the military become financially stable and financially free. So our focus, our mission is to move the needle in the veteran space. We hire veterans, we train veterans, we literally, you know, mar Marines will come and intern with us for six months, their last six months on active duty and learn about real estate or get their license so we can dig in and, and serve more. And so we've kind of taken what we've done here at a small scale in San Diego, serving the military, and we've replicated that system and process and training and are opening up other markets. So we're currently opening up four markets in Texas. Um, we're working on uh, Virginia Beach. It's a, it's a large military hub. We're working on Florida, and we're working on Washington, uh, the Seattle area as well. Wow, it's really exciting. <clears throat> so you're helping a lot of families in the military community. Um, tell us a little bit about um, real estate here in the San Diego market. I mean, mm -hmm. what's, what's it look like for the environment for someone who's in the military right now to be purchasing a home? And, you know, right. do you have uh, inventory of homes that, you know, are suitable for them? And uh, walk us through how you help these guys. Yeah, so it, it depends on how long they've been in, obviously what their pay grade is. We get a lot of mis conceptions about California real estate. A lot of the folks that get stationed out here are from middle America, where you can actually buy a decent house for a couple hundred thousand. In San Diego, obviously you know this number, the median single family detached home price is over 550 now. So right. there's a shortage of real estate and it's the demand that keeps prices high. But what, what the military doesn't understand, what a lot of these guys don't understand is they'll give their BAH up to Lincoln military housing or just live on base and they'll just cough it up. They don't realize that it's a tax-free entitlement. They don't realize that they can use it to fund their mortgage and go zero down on a home. Um, and they don't realize that they're gonna get a mortgage interest deduction. So they're gonna get a double whammy in taxes by purchasing real estate as opposed to giving up their BAH to a private organization like Lincoln military housing. So uh, when it comes to the initial meeting with, with anyone, we sit down and we do a strategy session. We say, hey, where can we get you approved? Let's get you connected with a phenomenal VA lender, a phenomenal uh, veteran focused lender and see what we can get you approved to. And from there, let's talk about different areas. So we see a lot of military purchasing homes in Escondido. It's kind of an up and coming area. There's a lot up in Vista because the, the dollar goes further up in Vista. Vista and Oceanside are developing rapidly, but it's still affordable there for military. And then we see a lot in Temecula and Murrieta. Um, a lot of, I, I see guys that literally buy homes up in Temecula, Marietta, and commute all the way down to 32nd Street. And then if they're stationed in Coronado or 32nd Street, a lot of those guys are buying in East Lake and Ote down uh, in Chula Vista. 
That's awesome. And they're, they're getting equity on a Southern California home. Correct. So, I mean, they're growing that pretty quickly as well. So, um, if somebody's interested in, you know, buying real estate or just getting some education on their VA loan benefit or just how to start building some wealth with real estate or owning something in the San Diego market, especially right. while they're stationed here, or maybe even if they're a veteran now and they're a civilian, what's, what's the best way for them to get connected with you and, and just get um, an info session with you? You could literally text Century to 444-999, or you could zip us an email at info at the chiselgroup.com. Uh, you can give us a call, 858-777-9816. So we're here. Um, our time is free for veterans. Um, some of the best experiences I've had in real estate actually didn't even involve a sale. It was just uh, a 30-minute phone call of helping someone get on the right path get into real estate and learn how to build wealth through real estate. That's great, that's great. Well, um, one question I like to ask everybody, since I'm an Air Force vet um, <laughs> and I'm in a Marine Navy town. Yes, sir. What, what is your, your favorite just Air Force zinger? What do you got for me? Well, I just, you know, when I'm talking to my fellow Marines, we love uh, ripping on the Air Force how it's just a private organization. It's not really a military service, you know. <laughs> it's uh, we call it that we call it the Chair Force. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right. We are we are very envious of the budget um, that you guys have, though. Every Air Force base I've been on is amazing. When we were stationed up at Camp Pendleton on workups, we were in a condemned building. With the, I think the <laughs> condemned sign was actually falling off. Nice, nice. <laughs> well, that's great. Mike, we thank you for, for coming and spending some time with us today on Veterans One. And um, we look forward to having you on the show again. Thank you, sir. All right.